because um, like the depth of uh, causation is that mind is causative and and so even though music can have such a profound seemingly such a profound effect on us it stirs up emotion it stirs up memory uh, it can inspire healing um, would you how would you describe what is actually happening is it the music that's causative or is it the mind somehow drawing forth something that's helpful for the healing? I've always felt intuitively that that music, as with everything in perception, is is communication. And when it comes down to music, I think um, within the realm of perception and consciousness, where there seems to be levels, I would say it's like a higher form of communication. So a lot of times so much is conveyed uh, just even in instrumental music where there are no lyrics and the emo heart opens and there's just this huge swell of emotion and it's, it's not really in what we would call music in terms of earth because there's, there's notes and there's melody, there's different instruments there's different um, volumes, and uh, I always was uh, loving that when they asked uh, Mozart what was the most important thing or the best thing, uh, he said it was the silence between the notes. But that takes a mind that that is so much of a genius at something, so much of a genius at the craft that that it is able to be aware of. That being the delicious part for Mozart, the, the silence between the notes. So that kind of points to this divine silence, this revelation where all things are known, all things are recognized, identity is recognized, and so in that sense, it's music as we talk about it is, is just an aspect of perception. But what music really is, I think if you get underneath it, it it has to do with identity. So when Helen Schuckman was working with Jesus, um, first came A Course in Miracles, and then, then came this pamphlet called The Song of Prayer. So here we have a title of a pamphlet from Jesus in which the word song is put together with prayer. Song of Prayer. And then in that Song of Prayer, it's basically described as the Song of Heaven in which the Creator and Creation, the, the Father and the Son, sing together eternally. Well, there could be no definition after that pamphlet was written that would ever come close to the song that the, the Father and the Son sing in eternity. Um, it's describing an eternal relationship, an eternal creation. It's describing the Kingdom of Heaven. It's describing everything. And he's using, of all the words Jesus could have picked, he call, he picked song. Uh, quite amazing when you think that that song he's putting as synonymous with identity, and not just Christ or not just Father, but the song that the Son sings to the Father and the Father sings to the Son, an eternal song. So that is way, way, way beyond this world of time and space and stars and planets and the most beautiful melodies we've ever talked about or we've ever experienced, you know, we we can watch them now on YouTube and, and be just hushed by how precious they are, you know, uh, like Celine Dion and Josh Groban singing the prayer, or Andre Bocelli and Celine, you know, those are so many people I know that are just, that's their, one of their favorite, favorite songs, and then that's the foothills <laughs> towards the experience of remembering who you are and remembering God. <laughs> 